Welcome to my series Useful Design Ideas. In this one I'm showing making leather belts for driving dynamos. I don't make drive belts very often. A lot of the engines that I've seen and worked on use the Mamod type spring belts. These work OK but of course you have to turn grooves in the flywheel and the dynamo pulley. For this job I need a flat leather belt to drive the dynamo. Similar to the one made by my friend Andrew at Black Orchard Books for my large showman's engine. Before I start, here's a bit of a disclaimer. I am not a leather worker, this is something entirely new to me. First of all, I need a very sharp blade in my Stanley knife. And what I'm currently doing is turning around the existing blade because this part of the blade has never been used. These are great tools to have in the workshop, but I always use the retracting type. The blades are unbelievably sharp, nearly as sharp as my Roman gladius sword. The first thing I need is a surface on which to cut the leather. This is a thick piece of card and it's ideal for the job. The other day I made a leather drive belt, it was a bit too wide, but I made it in exactly the same way as I'm about to show. So here's the plan, a leather drive belt to connect the Stuart number 10 to the dynamo. The dynamo has a crown pulley and as you can see the original belt that I made the other day stays on very well even when I short circuited the output terminals to apply a sudden heavy load the belt didn't fall off. I have some sheets of black leather and I'm going to cut one of these up to make a drive belt. This stuff is different, it's a bit knobbly on the top surface, not as smooth as the brown but as an experiment I thought it would be a good idea to cut this up first, rather than trim down the brown belting. First of all, I need to show a health and safety warning. This knife is extremely sharp and it needs to be for the job. Proceed with caution and make sure that you do not cut your fingers. Apply a lot of pressure to the steel rule and not so much on the knife blade, as a new blade will cut the leather very easily. Never use a blunt knife for this job as it will not cut the leather properly and require far too much pressure to make it cut which could be dangerous. In this clip you can see my left hand shaking as I apply a lot of downward pressure to the steel rule to hold the leather in position. Once I'd trimmed one side of the piece of leather I turned it around and cut the leather to the correct width to make the belt. There are many leather tools available, and some of these tools make stripping leather very easy, but I don't have any of them. If you're a leather worker, don't bother sending me any links to leather working sites, I don't have the time to wade through them. I generally do things the hard way, and I find out how to do it after a while, then it becomes easier. And I recommend that a lot of people do the same. Practice makes perfect. In this clip, as you can see, I've stapled a piece of emery cloth to the card that I'm using. And what I'm doing is I'm chamfering the top surface at one end and the bottom surface at the other end. And so I can have a practice, I'm using a couple of scrap pieces of leather first. Here I'm applying the very thin super glue. Then I place part A against part B and wait for a while. Although I did press the parts together using the steel rule. There is another way to join leather belting, and it's this way, although this is a particularly bad example because I made it in a rush about 12 years ago. It's from my one and a half inch scale showman's engine. This belt has worked perfectly for the last 12 years, even though the staples are not in the right position. I recently bought another stapler, and that's the one I used to staple the piece of emery cloth down onto the card. I've actually bought a very small stapler which hopefully will use smaller staples that will go around the pulley on the dynamo shown here. The larger staples on the traction engine's belt works fine because the dynamo pulley is much bigger than this one. This clip shows how long the staples are that are used to fasten the piece of emery cloth to the card. I did this wrong to start with, I stapled from the wrong side and I thought better of it and stapled from the other side. I'm hammering it in position to make sure the staples do not stick up because I'd already cut myself on the sharp pieces that were sticking through from the underside. 
I turned the card around and hammered the staples at the other end. As is quite obvious, I am not a leather worker. What I'm doing here is using a small blowtorch just to burn the edges of the leather. It's time now to make the actual belt. First of all, I chamfer one end, and once that's nicely chamfered, and you can tell whether it's level, because you can easily feel it through your finger. Sometimes I use my one-inch belt sander, but this is a bit severe and often sands my finger. Speaking from personal experience, when making leather belts for dynamos, you probably will not get the length correct the first time round. I always pre-stretch the piece of leather by pulling it tight before I arrive at the final length. Top tip time. Obviously the first tip is use a hammer to make sure that the parts contact each other and then use some saliva to moisten the leather which cures the super glue much quicker. Now I didn't need the original belt. I snapped it by pulling it apart as hard as I could. It's interesting to note that the joint didn't give way. I put a pair of pliers on the joint and pulled the leather again and even on the second attempt, the joint did not break. Each time it was the leather itself that tore, not the joint. This is a slow motion clip showing the black belt in action. And as you can see, it's turning the dynamo. And even when I applied a load to the terminals, it stopped the engine. The belt did not fall off. It wobbles about a bit on the crown of the pulley, but it doesn't fall off. That's the main thing. I buy my supply of leather from a friend of mine called Andrew Stone at Black Orchard Books. Here's an extract from a video I made a few years ago featuring Andrew's work. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. I have no connection with Black Orchard Books other than a very satisfied customer and I really recommend looking on the website to see the range of things Andrew actually makes. He's very creative and very imaginative and will help you with the design of the object that you require. Highly recommended. Please don't forget to check out the website, you will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.